Hold on, so we want first we're going to talk about uh, Batman number 47. Batman it's number actually 47. the final comfort. Do you have the comic right here? I do. We, it's the final com it's the final confrontation, I believe, between uh or one of the final one of the final confrontations between Batman and, and Mr. Bloom. Mr. Bloom. Yes. Yeah, who has been a really I think he's been a really good addition to the Batman Rogues he's Gallery. Been a thorn in Batman's side. So what do you think of him as a villain? I think he's uh he, he, I think he's ruthless and uh uh he's um he's kind of hard to uh to understand how they're going to beat him. Um, right, right. He's uh, he, he's also one of those guys that you know because he's had so many other uh, incarnations of himself right, already appear. Right, right. Uh, that uh, no matter what you do, there's always going to be a chance you didn't get him completely. Well, that's that's true. I mean, he's kind of like a, that's the whole thing he's with him. He's kind of a man. spore. He he's kind of like a plant in that sense. Of course, with the name Mr. Bloom and the and the seeds and such. And so there's really no way you can ever count him out, I don't think. I think he's, like, that was really, that's a creation of uh, Greg Capullo and Scott mm -hmm. Snyder, and I think he's a great addition yeah. to the Rooks Gallery. I think yeah. he's, like, a... Uh, Stabbing with the fingers, too, you But know, he's more like a Batman Jim Gordon villain, though, mm -hmm. right? He's more of a Jim Gordon villain. Yeah, he really wants Gordon. He really wants the GCPD uh, and, all right, the, right. and all the politicians and various associated uh, corrupted figures of Gotham City, which is, you know, you have to wonder what his deal is. What's, what's his beef? I know what is his beef. Well, what's, what's going on in this series too is there's a big com confrontation between um, what is it, uh, Bat uh, Bruce Wayne, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the Robin figures. Duke. 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 He's actually the leader the of the. He's actually the leader in the front runner and of the We Are Robin. He's the son of Lucius Fox. Yes. Yeah, he's the son of Lucius. No, 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 no. He's not. He's not. No, he's not. Okay. Uh, You're thinking of uh, Batwing. Ah. Batwing is the son of Lucius Fox. Excuse me. It's okay. It's okay. But there's a big confrontation there because actually. Uh, Duke he's... knows who Duke knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman, mm -hmm. and he's has a big competition of Bruce Wayne because he doesn't know that Bruce Wayne's asthmatic or uh, asthmatic or you know he has amnesia mm -hmm. and he doesn't remember his whole time as Batman. So he gets in this whole thing about how he's disappointed that he feels like Batman just kind of let it go. That Batman has meant so much to these these kids and so much to the people at Gotham that he's disappointed in Bruce because he's essentially taking the easy road as duke feels he does but i mean and, 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 and also he can, reads him out and he's really explicit like he's not privy to the understanding that alfred well and it's funny else it's funny have. because he it's funny though it's, it's, it's interesting the way scott snyder's been writing bruce wayne too because he's kind of like stumbling back into batman it's almost mm -hmm. like he's like a the the uh, absent-minded professor he's almost stumbling back into it's who like he a was reflex. It's, a reflex. it's a reflex and it talks about how like he i kind of found you here and he's like you found me here you yes. found me here. Found me no, here. you figured out this clue, and you picked this up, and you deducted this, and because you deducted this, you and do. this is what you, and he got here, because that's like, the best. You are the best detective there is. Yes. Like, that's what you do. Yeah. Like, you are yeah. Sherlock Holmes. He does tell him straight up. He's like, you, you, th this, is, this is who you are. And uh, it's very explicit, and it's very abrupt. Right, and right. And it's very effective, too, because he has a vision. He almost does. He does, he does, and he that's kind of like, uh, I mean. In the tunnel, he's, he sees the... Like like the knights. He does. The he does. Back came through the window. Right. 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 Smoke and the and the, it's it's terrifying. Uh, all over again. Right. 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 Trauma. It came back. The trauma mm -hmm. comes back. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And like and he starts slowly slipping back. And what he does, um, I guess uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But what we want to talk about is the big confrontation between Mr. Bloom and Batman. There's, there's, there's a confrontation between Mr. Bloom and Batman. There's a big. There's an awesome scene in the beginning where Batman's escaping. Uh, what is he escaping in the beginning? Is it like a furnace, or? A, he, uh, he's, just, he's fighting Mr. Bloom in a factory. And, uh, well, first, the, uh, the, uh, the rookie's coming after him. Oh, he, yeah, with the, 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 the rookie. Programming. The rookie was he's fighting the rookie. and then uh, Oh, Mr. Bloom reprogrammed rookie, which is the suit that Batman Jim Gordon wears, to actually fight Jim Gordon. Yes, but when he's outside the suit, he's much more vulnerable, and that's kind of what uh, Bloom is waiting for. And he hasn't pinned down, and uh, he, uh, uh, Gordon... Uh, essentially has figured out a way to uh, fry his seeds through the electromagnetic uh, pulse of right, this machine right. that he has in his possession. And so they do that. Like an EMP of sorts. Yes, and this is, uh, mean, meanwhile, there's a, the, the, the interaction between Duke and uh, Bruce Wayne is taking place. He has the vision. Uh, at one point, uh, Gordon tries to take off, he renders Bloom kind of incapacitated. Right, right. He tries to take off his mask, and that's when the entire city has been turned into Mr. Bloom's. Uh, and apparently, this was all a ruse. The entire city is—is is it the entire city, or is it just a lot of people? Um, he says here. I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> that's the thing about playing GCPD at Harvey's. The face down card, the Gotham card. It's on the secret timer. Right, got right. All these people coming out. Maybe it's not the whole city, but it's a lot of people have become Mr. Bloom because of the seeds. And uh, right, right, right. It's a significant amount of people. Significant amount Mr. of people. Right. And uh, that's kind of where we leave Gordon. Oh, we also have another Bruce introduction the of the, uh, 
Another mention, I mean, uh, the faded bat truck. Yes. That lasted, like, who yeah. lasted in, like, one issue, yeah. I think, in the last. Like, Jim Gordon used it to smash up a villain or something like that. Anyway, I just want to mention the bat truck because I want to add that visual one because I really want to add it to the video because you got to see the bat truck. The bat it truck. looks awesome. You wonder if it's going to suffer the same fate as a lot of Ah, uh, Greg vehicles. Capullo, I'm so sad you're leaving somebody, Batman. Somebody always gets destroyed. A vehicle always gets destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be sad when Greg Capullo goes. Anyway, any so a big reveal in the end of Forty Seven. Please, please, what is the reveal at the end of Forty Seven? You want to say? Okay, uh, well, Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is is uh, has just after the confrontation with Duke, he goes to the bench where actually he was. Uh, he goes to sit because it's near where they found him. It's where he had an accident, and he sits there, and a gentleman sits next to him, a gentleman with green eyes, and a big and, smile. And a big smile. And Bruce talks about how he had an accident here some months back. And the, the uh, strange gentleman smiles at him and says, oh, so did I. Yes. And suddenly it occurs to us that the Joker kind of suffered the same fate. Right, right, right. Which means that if they're on the same kind of tack, um, amnesia-wise, they're coming to their realizations at the same time right. in the same place. Right. And all of that realization will happen with them side by side. Well, just, I, I think it's kind of interesting, too, because I really, when he sat down, I was excited. I actually, that's when I, te when I instant messaged you right away, and I'm mm -hmm. like, we have to talk about this yes. in the podcast because it's just, it's really big. I mean, I think it's a big deal because, I mean, the question is, I mean, if Bruce Bain has, obviously, the Joker has some sort of as asthma, too, but, like, I mean, what's going to happen from here on out? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are they going to do with this? Like, that, what my, is going my on? Big, my big question is, if knowing the Joker, knowing the Joker's right. character, uh, right. I don't know that he doesn't totally remember everything in this moment because the difference between the Joker <laughs> and Batman and their their doppelganger sense and this right, right. totally um, this would totally work or totally would happen um, Batman doesn't want the bad stuff back not really Bruce Wayne doesn't really want the bad stuff the memories the things that make him what he is he how, do you, well, how does he know what he wants if he doesn't know they're I, there I'm saying the subconscious okay. is probably trying to reject it which is probably part of the reason that he takes so long to remember it. But the Joker, on the other hand, embraces his madness, right. embraces his carnage. He would probably be a little quicker back to the world, as it were. Right. And so right. I have to wonder if he's not there for the very reason of to drop some more trauma. Drop some more trauma on Bruce. Do you think he knows? I think he might. I think he might. Do you think he knows about their history? Yes, I think he might. Is that your speculation? That's my speculation. I think the Joker might have come back to the world a little quicker, and he may be, he may be trying to... Right, uh, right, right. I, I, we, we understand their relationship. There can't be one without the other. So, of course, his, ne his aim is never to kill him. But without the game, right, right, what's right. there to live for? So he's got to get the game going again. It's funny because they're kind of, kind of going to approach this from a kind of a more subconscious level. Because honestly, people, a person's who they are. Yes, who's who they are, who they are, who they are, mm -hmm. and like, and especially a person like Joker and yeah, and Duke the Batman. Up, your tendencies are acting, regardless of your knowing about them. They're ha they're they're happening whether you can stop them or not. Uh, you came here right. because right. that's what you are. Right, and so this is happening e independent of your own thought process. Right, right, right. And the, the same thing could be going on for Joker. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and, and here's the thing too, is I was just thinking about too, is like when Bruce, when uh, Alfred's been shielding Bruce, mm -hmm. has the Joker been shielded in the same way? Who would be shielding him? Nobody. Nope. That's my point. Yes. It's like he doesn't have those like, kind of psychological no. shielding or people that are kind of blocking and kind of like trying to get him away from anything that was representative of who he was before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, so that's the whole thing too. trying to stop him. Right, right. Yep. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of an interesting very dichotomy ominous, there. Very ominous. And so that's where we leave 47.